Hustlers, welcome again to this simple video on the nine defense course rules on how to sustain your accounts. We've already covered most of these, so you'll understand most of them. I'm just going to clarify what each one means. The first one is protecting your browsing data. What that means is you're going to delete your cookies daily. That's for all browsers. And I want you to use Google Chrome Incognito or Firefox on a private browser. I'll show you in a screen recording up in a second. Just follow these rules at all times and don't get lazy on these because they're very important. You never want to give the bookies any of your data. If they know stuff about you, that's an advantage for them. We want to be the guys in the box seat at all times. We want to have the odds in our favor so we don't give them shit. Give them nothing. So just going to run through the three different browsers that we have here that we're going to use. So starting off with Chrome, we're just going to go up to the top right page and we're going to click the three dots. Going to go into the settings section, into privacy and security, and then click clear browsing data. We're going to make sure that all time is selected. And then we're going to press clear data. I'm just going to show you how to go into the incognito mode on Chrome. So again, you'd go into the three dots and then you'd click new incognito window. So that's your Chrome done. Now next we're going to look at Firefox, so Firefox is pretty straightforward as well. Again, side three buttons, preferences, privacy and security. And then you're going to click clear data, again making sure that everything is selected. And then you press clear, clear now, that's done. And then to get into a new private browser you would click the three buttons again. And then you click new private window. Same goes for Safari, once we get onto that. You're going to go into the file button and you're going to click preferences. You go into privacy, manage website data. And you're going to click remove all, remove now. And then once you've done that, you would quit all three browsers. And then next time you'd open it up and you'd actually select the new private window, as you can see there. You're going to round your stakes. This has been drummed into most people. They should already know this, but Obviously, always round to the nearest $5. Don't bet with decimals. Don't bet with $171, $172. Bet with $170, bet with $175. You know the drill. Round to the nearest five. Obviously, when the calculator tells you to put 171.64 and it's a non-favorite, you probably should round up for the non-favorite and down for the favorite. Just because when you round up for the favorite, you will get less money if the non-favorite wins. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's probably only a couple of dollars but it's important to maybe just follow that rule and stick to it the whole time. If you're consistent with that rule, you'll end up winning in the long term. Popular sports and Australian racing only. Again, we've been through this, but AFL, NRL, NBA, NFL, top soccer leagues, Grand Slam tennis, don't bet on random sports. I mean, if there's a cricket match on, that's the Ashes and stuff like that, World Cup, that's all good to bet on that stuff. But don't go betting on Icelandic soccer or, I don't know, random event in the middle of a day like the darts or stuff like that. I mean, if you're always betting on this stuff before you started match betting, that's all, that's all fine. But understand that these markets aren't as popular as the other markets that are offered. And when you bet on these markets, you're going to be like one of the only guys betting on that market. You'll be the majority of the money in that market. And you want to not draw attention to your accounts. You want to stay under the radar again. You want to look like that perfect banana. You don't want to look like that straight banana who's going to get thrown out. So make sure you remember that. Your timing of bets, probably one of the most important simple defense course rules is your timing. You don't want to bet on an event that's starting in five days time or four days time. You want to bet as close to the start time as possible. Now what that means is when you're starting off, you're not going to have a lot of confidence in your ability to do things fast. So obviously give yourself enough time to get both sides of the bets on. So an hour or two is plenty. But once you get better at it, and you're more efficient, you can actually do like your horse racing bets or your sporting bets with like five or 10 minutes left without any stress at all because you know what you're doing. The only exception to this rule is if you're betting on a futures bet, which is super important. So like, I don't know, the Champions League final result or the AFL grand final, that's a completely fine bet to be placing bets on on those markets because they're popular, there's a lot of money in them, and it's, it's, a, it's a sport where there's a lot of other people much bigger than us that are placing bigger bets, so that's all good. Popular markets only. As you get into match betting, you'll understand that as you've already been through the match betting terminology course, which talks about these type of bets, head-to-head lines, over and unders, they're all the popular bets that people bet on all the time. 
once you start looking into the other markets, you'll see that there's heaps and heaps of other markets like double chance, over and under corners, player points in, in football and NBA, which are all fine to bet on because they're non-promo. But just stick again to the popular sports and the popular markets in those sports. So don't go betting on the over and under corners in an Icelandic soccer match. It's just not popular. No one's going to be betting on that. And it's obvious if you do find an arbitrage opportunity within that market, it's very obvious what you're doing. And that is a straightaway flag for your account. And that's how you get restricted pretty fast. Remember we said restricted is more of a problem than getting banned from promos. Because if you're restricted, your risk is mitigated. So you can only win X amount of dollars on your account. Whereas if you're promo banned, you'll still be able to go ahead and place the big bets on arbitrage bets, which can still allow you to keep making money from match betting. Bet on non-promo markets. The number one thing that, that will sustain your account is this, betting on the non-promo markets. The more you bet on these, the more your account is gonna look genuine. The ratio has to be at least 50% non-promo to promo. Now at the start, you're not gonna be confident in some of the mug bets where you're, you're gambling essentially, and that's obviously gonna have issues with sustainability, but that's where you're gonna have to use the hedging and the two-way dutching with a small loss to fulfill this ratio at the start. Once you get better, you'll understand that you can place bets on random football markets or whatever sport you're confident at and you have a good statistical analysis. It's actually good to go ahead and, and place these sort of gambling bets. And if you're good enough, you can actually make money from them. We don't encourage going off the rails and, and just gambling heaps, but you can definitely get away with placing the non-promo mug bets and breaking even, which is a win really, because remember these non-promo bets are essentially account fees because they keep our accounts open. And I want you to keep track of this per account if you can. So the guys that are serious out there are gonna go ahead and take this advice. Obviously it's not necessary, completely necessary, but if you wanna take things super seriously and making sure your accounts are all in good nick, you should go ahead and count non-promo to promo bets per account. I personally don't do this because I just know that my non-promo betting is enough. But if you're wondering if it's not and you're not placing a lot of bets, then it's pretty easy to do this really. Like if you place 10 bets on Ladbrokes in a week and five of them are non-promo, you know your ratio is 50%. So that's really important. I want you to place mug bets and often. So the main difference between a mug bet and a non-promo bet is the fact that the mug bet is the type of bet that a gambler will place. So gamblers typically bet in the lead up to a race, like right before the jump, or they'll place a 10 leg multi on the sport or a same game multi right before the start of the match. They'll obviously go for the big payouts, high odds, low chance of winning. And these are the type of bets that the bookies love. And they live off these bets entirely. Things like quinellas, trifectas, which you're not going to have any idea about what and how to do those at the moment unless you've been an experienced punter before. But in the future, you're going to place those bets in between your promo bets on a Saturday and in between laying your bonuses, etc. on Betfair. And you're just going to make those accounts look genuine because mugs all day will punt and they'll place stupid bets and stupid multis going for the big payouts. And if you put a two or three leg horse multi on for 15 or $10 and it gets through first or second leg, you can actually lay that third leg and make sure you, you win a small amount or you can hedge your bets and make sure you make a profit from that non-promo mug bet. As well as this, you're going to use your middling opportunities as mugs. And when you learn how to do middling bets, which is in the next module, in module two, you're going to understand that these middling bets are great for account sustainability as well. And they count as mug bets because most of the time you're going to be doing them right before the start of a match. This one is huge for the people out there that are new to match betting and you're gonna have new accounts. Those out there that have already had accounts for a long period of time, this doesn't really apply to you because your accounts have already been open for a long time, as I've said. You're gonna avoid promo bets in the first two weeks if that's possible. The reason being for this is in the first two weeks, especially if you're making a withdrawal, you will have your account reviewed pretty much immediately after that first withdrawal. And if your majority of your bets are promo bets, then they're going to straight away put a little bit of a flag on you. You probably won't get banned, but you might have a little bit of an X next to your name as a promo abuser or as someone who just goes in, uses promos, takes the money out and goes away and never comes back. The bookies hate those people. They're the bent bananas, the bananas that they want to throw out. If you cannot get caught into the temptation of doing this, you're going to have a big reward later on. Ideally, if you can start off your first two weeks of your account and just doing non-promo bets the whole time, so you might have a little bit of a loss in the short term, and that's something you need to get your head around accepting that, then you can actually be rewarded later on. And if you actually do the first sort of two weeks of non-promo bets, you can maybe make an exception to the withdrawal rule because basically if they see that you haven't placed one single non-promo bet, 
especially if your account has actually started losing, you will actually get a tick off on your account because they'll review it. They'll be like, oh, this guy's genuine. He makes a couple of nugs bets. He doesn't place any promo bets. He's fine. We'll tick him off. Take out 10% or 20% of your withdrawal. Remember, maximum withdrawal is 20%. And then you'll be ticked off. And then your account after that is pretty much not guaranteed not to get banned, but it's less likely because they're going to have ticked it off and it just goes into the big pool of mug punters where it won't get reviewed again until six months time or if there's a reason if you want a lot of money or if you suddenly start abusing promos again and lastly i want you to think long term here you have to be patient now i've already discussed patience but this match betting journey is not going to be something that you want to rush remember it's the long-term profit number that's going to be the most important and it's very hard to take your eyes off the short term as new and experienced match bettors but you need to be able to do this because you're going to thank yourself later if you do it properly now if you do it properly now i guarantee you you will surpass every other person who goes out there abuses promos and gets their accounts banned you need to be sustainable follow these rules and i promise you you will be rewarded later on